Okay, so I'm back with a third episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, my review, my perception of the show. This um, show tonight um, started off with Phaedra and Portia doing a colonic. And baby, I mean, it was cute. I, like I said, I didn't watch last season, so I don't know when they became friends. But hey, cool. I'm all for everybody being friendly and making friends. That's always been my thing. But why the hell was Phaedra sitting in here while this child was shitting on this table? I don't really get that. Um, yeah, about that, sis. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, I guess. And then it also showed Todd and Candy um, having their recap of what happened with the Phaedra Candy conversation. Um, Todd brought up a very valid point. If Apollo asked Todd, can he keep the bikes or whatever there at their house? And Todd didn't run it by Candy, but okayed it. Phaedra shouldn't have a problem with Candy about this. I don't, I don't see that. But hey, looks like they're on the path to recovery. Hopefully they can make a recovery if these confessionals. Because baby, the confessionals on the show and... They they read like we're never gonna see these. My like every confessional, somebody is reading somebody, but hopefully the confessionals won't set them back too far. Um, moving right along, um, Cynthia Noel and my baby daddy Leon. Leon has always been hot to me. I love him. Heart. Um. Anyhow, so Noel's being homeschooled because why? I wait. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I don't really know either, but hey, to each his own, you do what you want to with your children, they are yours. Um, but I think that people going to public schools, although in this day and age it seems to be a little more dangerous than not. Uh, but when you do go to public schools, you do learn social skills and social skills oftentimes get you further in life, unfortunately, than books since what you um, knowing what you can retain as far as education wise like if you can't put it to use or be of service to a company by having the social skills to show what you know it's kind of pointless so yeah but anyway I, I yeah moving right along that that tutor was the T hey baby hey baby my baby hey baby what's up <laughs> yeah in my TSE voice. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he was cute. I think I love him. Yeah. Heart. Him and Leon. At the same time. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Let me focus. Um, yeah. So Leon thinks that Cynthia should fight for the marriage. That's cute. I almost thought they was going to get back together. But in my mind, in my heart of hearts, I just feel like... Leon is like my good girlfriend, my Judy, my auntie, you know. Yeah. But, eh, I guess. Move right along to the next segment. So, Kenya Moore has a hair care line. Now, I did slightly remember her saying something about that seasons ago. And, yeah, that's cute. Because, I mean, Kenya does have long, natural hair of her own. Although, in some episodes, it looks... Fuller or longer than in other episodes, and according to Portia, um, that's her, you know, naked, go naked hair. But hey, I don't know nothing about that. That's a cute look for her, a good business venture, I guess, if you can get it together. But it's just like when they read Sheree for not having fashions. Hmm. Anyway, moving right along, um, at this. Venues, I guess, go see or whatever the case may be. They were going to see the venue. Why was Marlo there? Like, is she a business consultant of sorts? Like, I, I'm not reading, not reading. I just always kind of wonder what it is that she does. And in that particular scene, it kind of made her look like a businesswoman that may be like a consultant of some sort. So, if anybody can clue me in on that, please let a bitch know. And baby, can you please stop shading people? Like when they, 
when Marlo said that she wanted to talk to Sheree to figure out what was going on, you jumped right immediately on to shading and you were saying that they should throw a rent party. A rent party. And then you said it multiple times, kind of like a five-year-old who needs attention and want to make sure that you heard what they said because in the five-year-old's mind, it was really, really cute. Karma's a bitch. Karma is a bitch. Move right along, Kim Fields. Kim Fields, her husband was a key. Oh, he was a key. And clearly, they go to church. They know the Lord. I like them. I think they're... I did previously say I thought that she kind of reminded me of the Deshaun Snow of the show. But her husband, yeah, he just kind of picked that up for me. They just... Yeah, they, they gave them some life. And they were excited about going out because they have, you know, babies and stuff to watch after. And they don't get much free time off. That was cute. I had enjoyed their little segment. Yes. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of them on the show. Unfortunately for some, I don't think we'll be seeing them cut up and act real ratchet and trap like as the other housewives tend to get into that. I don't think so, but hey, if it happens, it happens. Oh well, they're human just like everybody else. Um, moving right along, the Kenya Moore experience, baby. Baby, it was a cute event as far as the housewives conducting themselves. I thought it was really nice for, you know, Kenya to pull Sheree to the side. However, Kenya still has that victim, no, I didn't say this, selective memory type thing going. Um, she had a synopsis of in, how her, in her mind how she said what she said, but when in actuality what she said was really shady, spiteful, and rude. And Sheree tried to remind her of this, and she was like, no, 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 come on, Sheree, let's not be delusional. No, baby, who's delusional? I think you're delusional sometimes, sis. But hey, maybe they're on the path to recovery, too. I think everybody, you know, being about, in the world we live in, we need to be about being our brothers and our sisters' keepers, being kind, being friendly. Stop with the petty shit. Worried about what somebody got that I don't got. Or what, worried about what I got and it looks better than what the next person has. Baby, just look forward to living life day to day. And the world we live in, life could be gone and turned around as quickly, like, as quickly as that. And you'll never know life the same again. But hey, I guess I get it. It's a TV show. I know all of it's not. All of it's not truly how they're acting. Some of it's just written or edited, edited that way. So, hey, I'm interested in seeing how this progresses throughout the season. I'm pretty sure they're going to spaz out again. Uh, and then, in the show with the Peter and Cynthia drama, if you will. To me, it sounds like um, Cynthia has already made up her mind she wants out. Um, she's not going to do this anymore. It sounds like to me in that particular sit down situation, she was ready to say, Well, baby, I want a divorce. Now you can either sign or you cannot sign, but baby, I'm out of this bitch. Peace. But that's not what happened. So she said she's going to give it one more run. And then for Peter with these crocodile tears, Peter reminds me of a manipulative young man I used to know when I went to school at the Fort Valley State University. Shout out. <laughs> Um, he he used to manipulate the shit out of his girlfriend just like that. How can you say you love somebody and not show it? I I've always, I agree with Cynthia on this. Saying you love me, you can say it all you damn want. Until you show that you love me, you don't love me. That's just like I say now with friendships. If you ride with me, ride with me. Show me that you ride with me. There's only like probably a handful of people I can say that really I know ride for me. And I know for sure without a shadow of a doubt, I don't question it. One of which I had this great phone conversation with last night after we was together for hours. So, hey, shout out. Um, yeah, I know that little nigga ride for me. And it's nothing like knowing that somebody rides for you. That somebody has your best interest at heart as well as their own. And will defend you at all costs. Will not try to cause you any harm. And I don't feel like as a married adult and a very seasoned adult, Peter has not done that. For the majority of their five years of being married. And I can understand where Cynthia is coming from. I don't necessarily promote divorce. But I also, I'm not one of those people who say, you know, it's not in the Bible. It's a sin, this, that, and the third. Because to each his own. Because and there's no sense in me staying with you, staying with you, stressing me out to the point where I kill you. Or you get so pissed off because I try to leave you. I don't want to be bothered to the point where you kill me. And crazy shit like that starts to happen. So, hey. 
I really do hope for the best for them. But in my mind, Cynthia's made of her mind. But hopefully, Peter can do some things to turn it around. You know, maybe he can be more cognitive of the things that he do. I'm sorry, the things that he does, the things that he says, the positions or the predicaments he puts him puts himself in. You know, hopefully he'll be able to be aware of his surroundings and be in the moment to know that this particular situation I'm in, talking and whispering in such and such ear at this bar where there are cameras and live media around, it's going to look bad for my marriage. So maybe he'll be more aware of that. Anyway, that's just my little review for today. Hopefully this wasn't too long. Trying to kind of shorten these because it's going to be so many episodes and I know nobody really wants to watch a long review if we watch the whole hour of the show so until next week